Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Strong Draws. My name is Brad Strong and today I am uh, working on Miss Martian uh, from Young Justice. Uh, like I said in the last video where I did, uh, I think it was the coloring of Aqualad and then the, the uh, line art for him. I think I might just do a whole series of these, uh, just kind of pinups, I guess, of all the Young Justice um, crew league. So um, I thought some um, the next one would be Miss Martian. So that's what we're working on here, and I might do more in the future. I think this might be the last one I record, but if you go check out my Facebook page and uh, Twitter, you'll see all of the the final ones as I complete them. Uh, but I thought I'd try something a little bit different today, and that is to, uh, instead of having the video go quite as fast as it had been, uh, I thought I'd slow it down so you guys can kind of see the process, and I'll kind of walk you through what I'm doing. So as you saw, I always start uh, with the head and then a uh, gesture line or center line of the character. And then I kind of build it out into... Um, the ch uh, neck, chest kind of shape, where the hips are going to go, uh, just kind of loose lines of where the legs and feet are going to fall in, and, as far and kind of the length and the position of the arms. After that, I break it down into the point where I'm at now, where we kind of do the um, tubes, I guess you'd call them, it's, um, these cylindrical shapes to kind of represent uh, the mass of the area, not necessarily muscle shape or form, but just kind of the general size and shape of the area I'm working on. And then I just kind of um, start sketching stuff in, you know, moving stuff in and out. You saw earlier I kind of brought her waist in, gave her more of a hourglass figure, kind of gesturing in where the hair and the capers are going to go. And then, generally about this point, as you see, I, I will turn it blue. And um, from there, I will go into just kind of tightening up stuff. Um, getting the head shape and the jawline in properly, um, where the eyes and facial features are going to kind of go. And as you see, um, when I start working on the face, it's not going to be pretty at all. It's just going to be general ideas where everything's going to go. Nothing too um, finalized at this stage either. Uh, kind of working on muscle structure and where the, sh you know, the body's going to fall into place and how all the parts are going to fit together. Um, I think um, what a lot of uh, new artists do that tends to get them, make their characters look as stiff as they are, because a lot of young artists or new artists, when they start drawing people, all their figures are very posed and very stiff looking. Now, this is just kind of, like I said in the last one, kind of a sketch more than a finished drawing. Something I'm just kind of doing for fun to get used to, you know, I guess just more practice, not so much. Uh, finer details, but just more practice working on the human figure and whatnot. And I try to do as much, I, I, you know, if I'm sitting and I'm sketching, I'll do one of a guy, one of a girl, and I kind of just alternate so that <clears throat> I don't get over, you know, too much practice with one, and then um, f fall off on the other, I guess, because. Um, you can get into a, a mode where if you draw too many girls, your men start to look feminine, and vice versa. So I think it's good to alternate. Kind of what I was saying was, um, when new artists start out or young artists are drawing, their their characters all look really stiff. I think a lot of that comes from the fact of the refining process. You start with a loose sketch and then you refine it to a little bit tighter, and then you go back and you refine it more and more. And the more times you do that the stiffer your characters and your figures end up being. 
So, I, like I said, you see I turned it, the original sketch to blue, made a new layer, and I'm sketching on top of the new, on the new layer. But what I found is I tried to do that as few times as possible. Um, I think on, actually when I did Aqualad, I did all my final pencils, if you will, at this stage. I didn't even um, go in and do a, another blue line. Like, I think with her, uh, once I get this part done, I'm going to turn this blue and then do even uh, a little bit tighter pencils on top of this. But you'll see as um, when we get to the end, this isn't going to be a final pencil drawing. It's going to be still very, very loose. And um, other than um, maybe the face gets a little, it gets a little more detailed than the rest, but all of it stays very, very kind of loose and uh, almost a little sketchy looking, which I do all my. And then I, when I take it to inks, that's where I do all my final lines. So here we're working with the hand. You'll see I start with kind of a trapezoidish type shape for the palm and where the uh, thumb and fingers are going to kind of go and just kind of sketch in fingers from there. Now I'm just going to go in and like I said, at this point you're going to see me add, um, start adding facial features. Like there's the eyes, the nose, the mouth. And it's it, again, it, it's not very pretty at all. It doesn't, you know, at this stage it doesn't need to be. It just needs to all fit and all work. So again, the looser you can kind of keep this stuff, um, especially if you're going to ink, uh, the better results I think you're going to have. Just because it doesn't, it, it keeps your characters kind of, you know, a little more loose. Now if you're doing final pencils, again, the, the looser you can keep it, the, the better um, the better results you're going to have. I mean, you want to still have it, you know, if you're going to send it to an inker, or if you're going to have, um, just have someone color the pencils. Now, this all pertains to pretty much art, uh, comic book art, so if you're going to send it to an inker, I mean, you want to have enough information there so that the inker and or colorist knows what's going on, but you, you don't want to be uh, too clean and pristine and, again, posed and stiff looking. Because um, the, a lot of the, I mean, if you, I've been studying um, cartoon and uh, animation and kind of how they build their characters and where they get the movement from and been learning that a lot of it, especially up until almost the colors, if you actually look back at the old Disney animations, those lines are still pretty loose and you can see them jump around and that's kind of what gives them the character. And that's kind of what I miss about old uh, 2D animation even, is that it wasn't so pristine and precise as the, as like the 3D animated movies that they make nowadays. The so I, I think trying to keep that feel, kind of that looseness and um, almost sketchiness to an extent in your work really kind of helps it look a bit better. Now I'm just kind of roughing in where her uh, costume is going to go, her skirt and her gloves and the X across her chest, her belt. And at this point, like especially with like the boots and the gloves, um, they, she has kind of these uh, folded over, kind of I don't even know what, kind of what you would call that. But as far as those go, I'm just looking for kind of a cool shape more than anything. Not so much um, how they're gonna practically work at this point, you know, with the, but just something that kind of looks interesting. Now you're going to see me, we're going to go in here and uh, clean up the face. Another thing, especially working digitally, that I've been kind of um, working on as a discipline is not zooming in quite so close. Now, uh, I'm using a 3 pixel brush, and I am using my Wacom Cintiq 12WX. 
and I mean it kind of looks like I'm zoomed in, but on the, on that small a screen, it's still pretty pretty zoomed out. Like when I, when I first started, you know, the whole body that was completely zoomed out, which on this screen is only oh, I'm trying to measure here, maybe six inches tall, if that. I'd have to get out a ruler. I'm kind of terrible at that stuff, but trying to stay zoomed out so you don't, uh, so you can kind of keep the whole figure in your viewpoint and you don't get overly exaggerated or your proportions don't go out the window a bit. Um, usually at this stage, as you'll see here, as I start working on her face, um, everything gets very boxy looking, very straight edges and uh, very squared off at first. Just to make sure everything gets in there properly and then I'll round it. You can always go back and round it off later, which is what I'll do, especially with women you don't um, want to square a face. Um, unless, especially like with, with uh, Miss Martian, she's a teenage girl. They don't really have a strong jawline for the most part. They're more round. They still haven't, you know, and even though she is a Martian, you know, doesn't deal with the same physio physiology as a human being, she still looks like a teenage girl, so you need to keep her a little bit more round, um, a little softer even than a woman in her 30s would be, so. here just kind of rounding off the face a little bit kind of like what I was talking about hair is still something I kind of hit or miss on in my opinion it's still something I really need a little bit more study of and practice on but um, basically you just figure I the way I work as you'll see here is I just work in the big shapes the big um, kind of flow of the hair and then break it down into smaller shapes and groupings later on but um, for me the important part is the, the larger groups because you can go back and add the smaller groups a lot easier and you know later on so that uh, it all kind of holds together and try to mix it up and send it all in different directions just to make it again just a little more visually interesting Now as I work on her uh, breast here, you'll see that I, uh, as I've said before, I do have a second monitor, so even though I am zoomed in a little bit where I can't see the whole figure, my other monitor does have it full frame, so I do see the whole thing. And another problem I see with younger artists, especially uh, young male artists, is they draw breasts really sitting way too high on the chest, and the only time breasts will ever really look like that maybe is if they got a really tight bra on that's going to hold them up there and um, to me it always looks kind of goofy anyway even in real life but they sit down a lot further on the chest than um, most people realize if you really kind of study it they they and also depending on size and shape, you know, they, they, they hang, they sag, they're, you know, at least a little bit even when you're young, when girls are younger, because it, all it is is um, sacks of fat, essentially. So gravity really takes a part in that, so you have to really think of that when you're drawing those. And also, you know, depending on what they're wearing and what you're trying to uh, show off. If, they're, if she was wearing like a... Uh, corset where they're pushed way up high then that's a little bit different but generally you want them to be kind of lower and um, kind of in a I guess best way I can describe it is a relaxed state because there's no muscle there all the muscles behind them so even when they're moving and pulling back their shoulder it's the muscle underneath that moves not the breast so even if they're turning it depending on how they're moving it could you know the muscles are flexed and pulling but they're off to the other side because of momentum so keep that in mind when when you're drawing when you're drawing your women 
So here, <coughs> excuse me, working on her costume a bit more. And in, even in penciling, um, her I mean, even in penciling, I don't really do too much of the shading. I, I do all that once I get to the inks. And every once in a while, I'll put some in here and there, depending on what I'm working on. If I'm doing something that's really dramatically lit, I'll probably work it into the pencils just because it's easier to fix than it is in, in the inking stage, even, in, even when doing it digitally, at least, at least for me it is. So you won't really see me do a whole lot of shading. I think I put some around her nose. Or sometimes I'll just put it in a certain spot, like I said. I think I think I did it on her nose, and that was kind of a mental reminder to me of where I wanted the light source to be in uh, the picture. And it, if I do it anywhere, I'll generally do it in the face or neck area, just because that's what I tend to ink first. And that way I... Like I said, I have that mental reminder, or use that as a uh, as a reminding, you know, as a reminder to myself what what I was thinking of where I want the light to be coming from when I start inking it. I'm working on her gloves here now. Her she she presented an interesting challenge when it came to doing her costume. Because generally with gloves and stuff, you have the seams of where this they're sewn or the belt sits on top of stuff, and it's a little bit off the body, so you can put a, um, an accentuating uh, ridge line and stuff like that. And skirts have a certain, you know, way they fold, even kind of the stiffer material kind of skirts have at least some wrinkles in it, even when they're just kind of standing still. But with her costume, since it's kind of her skin for the most part because she can change it to what she wants it to be kind of you know like her uncle it it, the, it presented challenges because you know does it fold like normal clothing does it you know all this stuff I mean kind of nerdy things to think about I guess a little bit when working on it but it is things that come to mind and in the long run probably not a big deal overall but just kind of things to think about when you're working so here we got uh, working on putting her knees in there and kind of getting her legs where I want them to be adding her boots Like I said, this is going a couple, you know, two times the speed of what I actually work. So again, like when I, this is for, like I said, my sketchbook where I just kind of have fun and practice and goof around and just kind of draw what I want to draw, um, even though it doesn't really pertain to anything. And so part of the practice I I try to get out of my sketchbook is speed and. Um, trying to learn how to draw certain things that I don't wouldn't normally draw and just experiment and have fun so this for me was just to see with these sketches I'm, I'm trying to do it in at, I guess as fast as possible but still get good results all right, here just drawn in her cape, um, kind of deviated from the original idea. I thought I'd go something a little more simple, a little more dynamic, or um, graphic, not dynamic. And so I think we're about done here. Uh, like I said, it's going to be pretty loose pencils overall. Change the way her cape is added. So again, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if there's any questions you have or uh, characters you'd like to see me draw, leave them in the comments below. Uh, there will be an inking video to this one. So, um, excuse me, get, uh, leave a comment, let me know what you think. Do you prefer kind of this little bit slower method so you can kind of get a better idea of what I'm doing? Do you like the sped up versions where it gets all done in one, where I get the pencils and inks all done? Uh, just let me know. So, and otherwise, uh, check out my Facebook and Twitter for updates and uh, 
the rest of the Teen Titans, or Young Justice, um, pictures, or, um, pinups as they come out, because like I said, I'm not going to probably video any more of these, so. Uh, here's another good trick, uh, that I normally do, is, uh, flip the image around, kind of lets you know if something's a little bit off, if it needs to be moved, adjusted, bigger, smaller, up, down, left, right, all that good stuff. Didn't like the shape of her arms here, so I'm just kind of changing that around a bit. So I think the last thing you're going to see me do here after we can, I get done kind of sketching all this in is uh, turn it all blue and get it prepared for my uh, inking in the next video. So again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.